Hey guys, and welcome to the Bookmark Freedom Podcast YouTube channel. Now this is my second video. The first one I kind of showed my Amazon account and how I was actually making money with two simple ebooks. Uh, one being 11 pages and the other one I think is 22, 24 pages, something like that. Um, so it is possible and I am creating, as we speak right now, on my birthday actually, for you guys, the best damn video on the internet teaching you how to do this. Now, I could have maybe put together a class and sold it to you, but instead, I'm here to do this for free because I want you guys to succeed. So I've broken this down into three phases. Now, if you're going to create an ebook and sell it on Amazon and be successful, this is a proven formula. And honestly, I've improved upon it from the last time that I published an ebook, and I think it's even better now. If my calculations are correct, and they're never wrong. That's a joke. They're, they're wrong sometimes. But if my calculations are correct, you should be able to create an ebook using this process in six hours. And in that six hours, you create an ebook that's going to sell for no less. You're going to make, you're going to net $320 a month profit selling that one ebook on Amazon. So for six hours' work, you're going to get $320 in return every month from now until eternity until for some reason the book goes out of style or Amazon shuts down and I think we know that's not gonna happen so if you think about it six hours one ebook three hundred and twenty dollars now if you create 20 ebooks you're making what sixty four hundred dollars a month and that would be $78,000 or something like that a year. So it's actually possible to make a good amount of money on Amazon selling digital products. Now, I preach on my podcast, digital products are great. Personally, I feel like the actual business and being truly successful and creating something with equity and something you can sell is in the physical products realm. So my recommendation to everybody is to start in digital products, take something with no overhead, start making money, and invest that into physical products. Alright, so back to the ebook. That's my rant for the day. So I've broken this down in three phases. Now this is a big list, but don't let it scare you because we're going to break it down step by step. And to be honest, we may have to do a couple videos here because I really don't... This is probably going to be a total of about an hour, hour and a half or more. And I really don't think Amazon or YouTube will let me upload a video that big. So I may have to break it down into a couple different videos. But that's okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go through this list really quick and tell you why each thing is kind of important. And then we'll start walking through the process. So phase one is creation. Phase one is where... You're brainstorming and you have to come up with an idea. You have to come up with something, somehow, how am I going to, what book am I going to write, how much money am I going to make. And the idea process is yours. The brainstorming process is yours. I can't give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to brainstorm. Um, I know a lot of people go to Amazon and look at the top 100 books and they look in certain categories and things like that. Personally... I like to write about things that I've done and things I've experienced, not in the nonfiction capacity, or not in the fiction capacity, but in the nonfiction capacity. I like things, processes that I've done, something that I'm not going to have to do a lot of research or extra effort to, to create the content. <clears throat> so once you get the idea, you're going to go to your keyword research. Now the keyword research is probably the most important part here. Because that's what's going to tell you your demand, how many people are searching for this each and every month, and it's going to let you know about how many sales you can get. And also, it's going to steer you away from things that don't have demand. You may want to write about, I don't know, the new iPhone 7 or something like that, and then go and do your keyword research and figure out that only 50 people a month search for that. And if that happens, you're not going to want to write that book because it's not going to give you the sales volume that you need to truly be successful. So the keyword research does several different things. From there, once you come up with your idea and you do your keyword research and it's in a, a, 
the demand is in an acceptable range, you're going to go to Amazon and you're going to look at all the books that are already in that category. And you're going to analyze them. You're going to look at them. You're going to look at their ebook covers. You know, what, what's the quality? You're going to look at their reviews. You're going to read their three star reviews. You're going to go over every little detail and see, okay, <clears throat> is this people that I want to compete with? And can I do better than them? Can I create a product that is superior to theirs so I can surpass them in Amazon search algorithm and become the number one seller in this category? Then you have to come up with your title. Now, people overlook the title. The title is probably one of the most important parts of the book. I know I say everything is the most important part of the book, but this one truly is. This one truly is um, because this is one of three key things that are going to entice people to buy or to not buy. It's got to be catchy. It's got to be something that piques their interest and makes them want to look at your book versus all the other ones that are around you. And then from the title, their eyes are going to shift to your ebook cover. They're going to see what kind of quality is it? Does it interest them? Is it, you know, does it look like it's done by an amateur? <clears throat> because for some reason, people trust large companies and you can have the best content in the entire world. And if you've got a crappy title on a crappy ebook cover, you're going to get no sales. Then it goes to content. And I put content last for a reason. Now, content. Yes, it's important, but your content doesn't determine if people buy your book or not. Now, your content determines a lot of things. It's going to determine your reviews, and it may determine your long-term sales because it affects reviews. But your content's not, especially in your first 30, 60 days, it's going to affect nothing. So then, once we have all that together, we have our book. You know, we have everything we need for our book. And then we're going to go to phase two. Now, phase two, we're going to list the book on Amazon. And when we're listing the book, we're going to need a couple things. The format needs to be correct. The format has to be right. Now, I've got a template on my website at bookmarkfreedom.com. If you go there and you want to sign up for my email list, I will send you for free my ebook template that I use. So that part could be done for you if you so choose to. Otherwise, uh, you can go to Amazon's website and you can look at, like, they have the, I guess, the specifications there. And you're going to need to open a Word document and format everything. And it takes a little bit of time. And it takes a little bit of practice to get it right, but it's not too difficult. But you could save an hour of your time. Go to bookmarkfreedom.com. Give me your name and email. Promise I won't blow you up with crazy stuff. I only send out quality content. And I'm not big enough to be selling anything, so I think you're okay. Then your description. You're gonna have to put in your description and this you're gonna want you're gonna wanna spend a lot of time on it and make sure it's right and correct and grammatically correct and attention getting and there's a lot of things, you know, just think about it. When you write your description, is this something that would make me want to buy it? Share it with a couple of your friends or your wife or your mom or your dad and say, hey, read this and let me know if this is something that piques your interest or not. And then from there, we come back to the keyword optimization where we're going to use the same information that we got during our keyword research in phase one. And then we're going to have to decide on our pricing. Is this book two ninety nine or is it nine ninety nine or how much can I sell it for? Well, we don't know, and that's kind of so. All these things kind of tie back into each other because when we analyze our competition, we can see what they're selling for and sell for a similarish price. And four and five should be flipped. Uh, but then the last thing we're going to do once we actually push publish, Amazon's immediately going to say, "Would you like to publish a paperback now?" And then we're going to talk to that talk about that when we get there from there we're going to move to launching and launching essentially can consist of sales reviews and advertising and all these three phases combined that's what's going to determine if you are truly 100 percent successful or not so don't let don't let this scare you because we're still we're going to go through all these step by step and i'm going to show you what i do and how you can do it easily and be successful 
So, um, <clears throat> sorry if I pause now and again because I am actually having a Bud Light as we speak and I don't want to stop drinking it because I would rather talk. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's pretend that we, we, you know, I'm coming up with ideas and I've figured out, okay, what do I want to write this book about? And one of my personal interests is skydiving. It's like, okay, well, I want to write a book about skydiving. But now we have to do our keyword research and figure out, okay, is skydiving something that we want to write a book on? Is the demand there? So what I normally do, <clears throat> and there's multiple places that you can go to do this. Uh, this is the one I prefer. I just go to Google and I type in Moz keyword explorer. I like Moz a lot. Uh, seems to have accurate information and it's done me really well. Now once we get there, there's a couple things here. Uh, Moz they've got to the point now to where they only give us two searches per day so every every day we can do two searches here for free now they have their 30-day free trial up here which is normally what I do each time that I want to write a book or a series of books <clears throat> I will come and do a 30-day trial and I don't come up with one idea at a time. I try to come up with 20 ideas at a time. And I do all my keyword research and competition analysis and everything. Before I ever start writing any of them, I do all of this at the same time. That way I can get the most out of this 30-day trial. And I can come up with a lot of different ideas of books that I'm planning to write. And I will print out all the information for each of them. I will print out all the uh, the keywords the top keywords and all that mumbo jumbo that you're gonna see here in just a second <clears throat> but I just try to get the most out of that 30-day free trial now I've never been charged anything when I do their free trial so it's something that I recommend doing so you can get the most out of this system so <clears throat> I like I like skydiving so let's um, how to skydive and for some reason this thing is not really playing with me today I never said this was going to be entertaining <laughs> okay so we're going to type in our keywords and then we're just going to hit the little search thing over here and then we're going to have a brief analysis come up and it's going to tell us and it's like okay well the monthly monthly volume for this is 500 and, or 51 to 100 it's not that great um, but then we can say okay well maybe there's something else related that we can also write about so then what you're going to do once you get that done is you're going to come down here to the bottom of the page under the keyword suggestion box and you're going to click see all 1000 suggestions and then it's going to bring up an entire list of all kinds of related keywords so then what I like to do I like to come over here to the right under monthly volume and there's a little up down arrows here and I like to click that that way it brings the highest numbers to the top <clears throat> now for this there's a lot of different keywords all related to skydiving up here the top one is 501 to 850 so now looking at this even though I love skydiving and I would have an easy time writing a book on skydiving I would probably not write a book on skydiving because it doesn't have the monthly volume that I feel like I need to get the sales that I want to make the money that I want so I would move on to the next idea. However, um, we're not going to go through 20 ideas here. Let's just pretend that 
this does have the volume that we that we need. Now, personally, I like to shoot for somewhere between around seven thousand and thirteen thousand month for a monthly uh, monthly search volume. Now, if these words were 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 really closely related, and this was four thousand, and this was two thousand, and this was one thousand, then maybe if I could use all of those keywords in my optimization on Amazon, I would still consider writing this book. But I like my first one to be in that range. So the ranges that I stay away from are definitely anything lower than six thousand. Um, I don't feel like anything lower than that. It's really worth my time to write a book, right? Then the other things that I stay away from are the really high search volumes. Anything, I mean, if you come up with a keyword and it's got um, 350,000 to 1.5 million, it's either too good to be true or you've hit the jackpot, one or the other. Most of the time it's too good to be true. Um, and I don't say too good to be true as in there's not that many people searching for it. But when it comes to books and really anything selling online, when there's search volumes that are that high, that's where the big boys are playing. Now, I'm not going to go into, uh, I'm not going to go create a, a brand new search engine and day one start trying to create or start trying to compete with Google. It It doesn't work. I would fail very quickly because everybody loves Google. And even the ones, even the number two and three, uh, what is it, Google Chrome and probably Yahoo or something, are still going to kick the crap out of me. Like, I'm not going to go in and immediately start playing with the big boys. I'm doing this because I want to write a book that I'm actually going to be able to be successful with. So I'm not going to go into a market to where there's, um, you know, a lot of large companies and established publishers and things like that. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to stay away from the big numbers. I'm going to stay within my range and that's my comfortable place that I feel like that I can be successful no matter what. There may be one or two big players in there, but for the most part, that's going to be amateurs like me. So now we're going, now we have to go to step three. We've got our idea, we've done our keyword research, and we have all of our keywords here. <clears throat> oh, one other note. Now, if, if these did meet my standards uh, for monthly search volume, I may consider my, I may reconsider my ebook. Now, how, how to skydive is way down here at 201 to 500. Now I may consider, okay, Maybe instead of writing a book on how to skydive, I would write a book on how to get a skydiving certification. It's still a how-to type thing. I may have to do a little more research on it, but if the search volume was much higher for this one than it was for this one, then I would reconsider which book that I'm going to write. <clears throat> or maybe I still maybe I write a book, a two-part book on how to skydive and get skydiving certifications. But me, honestly, I would probably just write a book on how to how to get a skydiving certification if the search volume was much higher. The only other alternative is to write a book on how to skydive and include how to get a skydiving certification <clears throat> within the same book. That way I could use both keywords in, uh, in my Amazon keywords and maybe make a little extra money, maybe price it a little higher or something like that. However, once I go and analyze my competition, I'm going to have to determine if I'm adding a whole nother section to my book, it's going to take me longer to write it. Now I'm adding hours to my time and kind of the deciding factor is if I add this to the book, can I actually sell it for more? Or is it going to be if I can sell it for two ninety nine with skydiving, or how to skydive, can I sell it for seven ninety nine with the skydiving certification added into it? In most cases, I've determined that I've determined that I can't, and the book would probably only sell for the same price if it was just one. So maybe you determine that each of these books can sell for two ninety nine a piece, and you write 
two books using the same keywords and the same research. Uh, that's kind of what I did with my first book. I did a phase one and a phase two of a process. I'm not going to tell you what process, but it was a process, and I did a phase one and a phase two. And I did that because I determined that if I put them together, it would have sold for the same price. But now that I separated them, I'm selling each of them for that same price. And about 70% of people that buy my phase one also buy phase two. So I, I've doubled my money just by a little bit of strategic thinking. So now we need to analyze our competition. So to do that, all we do is we just go to Amazon and we just type in our keywords, which I did earlier, so it's right here, how to skydive. Now, we're in the Kindle store, so as you can see, a lot of other people do keyword research as well. And most people determine, determine that this was not a good book to write. If the search volume was much higher, they, there'd be 40 or 50 of them here. But we're going to analyze this one because honestly I think it's a good example. So the title is Skydiving for Beginners, $2.99. Now we're, I'm looking at the ebook cover and to be honest, it looks very amateurish in my opinion. I mean, it's just a picture with boring font. There's not a lot going on here. Personally, if the search volume was higher and I haven't seen this, I would get really excited because I'm like, well, this guy kind of sucks. And then I would get extremely excited when I look over here and see a one-star review. Now, I always check the reviews. And I always look at the verified reviews because verified reviews are people who have actually bought the book. When you go to Amazon, you can click only show verified reviews here somewhere. This one may not show it because there's not any unverified reviews. <clears throat> but this is actually good, though, because even with the search volume of, what was it, 201 to 500 people searching for it a month, he's still got some sales. You figure 2 to 3% of people actually leave a review, and he has one review. I would say he sold at least 50 or 60 of these probably before he got a negative review unless he just got really unlucky now typically I would be looking for three star reviews five star reviews are pretty much everybody who really likes it one star reviews are mostly most of the time you either have a really 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 crappy product which if that was the case you wouldn't have any five star reviews um, or somebody who's really upset with your customer service or some other thing, and that typically doesn't happen in ebooks. So your one stars are rarely happen for ebooks, unless it's a really bad product. So typically, I'm going to be looking for three star reviews because that's the people who who bought it with an expectation and didn't get what they thought they were getting. They're realistic people, and you can really count on the three star reviews. Now, for this one, I thought it was a really good example because this person says, For $2.99, I was not expecting a full-length book. But for crying out loud, each of the four chapters take up only two screens. Viewed at 16, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's right, the equivalent of eight pages in large print hardcover. And it should have been proofread by someone with solid grasp of the English language. Normally, Kindle Edition is a good deal, but not this time. So it sounds like the guy had maybe some formatting issues his content was very very short to um, his grammar was really bad so I mean this this book would be actually really easy to create something better because this is garbage so then we would come and we would look at the description oh and back to the reviews really quick one of the things that you're looking for when you're looking at the reviews is you're looking for something that you can do better. You know, how can I improve this product? You know, for this one, we know that we can make it a little longer, grammatically correct. We can have a better ebook cover. 
and I can already see the description is very, very short. Learn to skydive safely. This book is for beginners and reveals sky, skydiving equipment and gadgets. You'll learn how all about skydiving history and the thrill of indoor skydiving. Every skydiving beginner must read this book now. So it's it's a very short description, and since it's the only one, it's probably the only reason it got sales. Um, I'm honestly a little surprised the person said it was too short because mine's 11 pages and I've never got a negative comment about it. I think mainly because my content is straight to the point. There's no fluff. It's all, you know, legit, straight to the point, fact after fact after fact, opinion, fact, fact, and it's just all encompassing everything you need to know about the topic, even though it's only 11 pages. Okay, so we know that this is not a good book for us to actually write, but if we were going to write it, our competition is exactly where we want them. <clears throat> you know, and then we'd have to come up with a title. We want something catchy, you know, maybe not skydiving for beginners, but, and not just how to skydive, but maybe, you know, skydiving 101, how to dominate the air. You know, or something that really grabs people's attentions. And, and that's something that you're going to have to come up with on your own, kind of like the brainstorming. Now, the great thing is, if you guys wanted to join my Facebook group, you could come and join my Facebook group. And when you're writing your books, you could bounce ideas off of all these other people who interact with each other. And you could say, hey, I'm writing a book on skydiving. What do you think about this title? Or can you give me some ideas for titles? And you're going to have tons of people jumping in and throwing out random ideas. And maybe somebody gives one, gives you one that you truly love. You know, so my Facebook group is a really good place to do that, and it's a safe place to do that. And nobody's going to steal your idea because we all have our own ideas, and all we all have different goals and objectives. So go to Facebook.com and search for Bookmark Freedom and join my Facebook group. So that's going to take us to step five, our ebook cover. Now this is one of the most important parts about the whole thing. And let's search for something else. Um, I don't even know. Let's see. How we'll just do how to and see what comes up. You know, so we can look at the ebook covers and we can tell. You know, this is a Dell Carnage book. It's neat. It's easy to read, even even where it's you know minimized so small. Um, and you can just kind of look through and see the quality of all the different ebook covers. And you're going to find some really good ones and you're going to find some really bad ones. And a lot of it is, um, I guess, subjective. But, you know, some of the things to look for, it's when you, ha when you do your ebook cover, you have to take into consideration that it's going to it's going to be as small as what we're seeing right now so whatever is on your ebook cover it needs to be visible you need to be able to read it you need to be able to understand it you need to kind of be able to get an idea of what you're getting just by looking at the ebook cover and i don't see any really bad examples uh right now i mean some of these are pretty boring like this is not good i don't think I wouldn't do white around the edges because you can't tell where the actual ebook uh, cover ends. And as you can see, this is a new book. It's being advertised, sponsored product. And it's got no sales. Uh, it's priced too high based on the competition that's around it. So, so some of my stuff like that are the things that you want to look for. Now, there's a couple places that you can go to get ebook covers designed. Personally, I like to design my own covers. If you haven't done it, if you haven't taken it upon yourself and you want to be in the digital industry, I suggest you need to start learning. You need to learn everything that you can learn. And if you're going to do ebooks, I would personally start with um, learning graphic design. Now, personally, I design, I design all my own ebook covers. I design all my own logos. I do everything by myself. You know, so this is this is my Illustrator file for where I created my 
bookmark freedom uh, logo. And, it, and it's really not as hard as people think. And I'm just going to show you real quick. Um, you know, and a lot of it's self-explanatory. Here's the bar of all my tools. Okay, I want to write something. So I'm going to click the T, the thing that looks like text. Okay, I'm going to write... Um, awesome. Um, but I don't like that font, so I'm going to highlight it. And, and granted, you know, just finding your way around takes a little bit of time, but, you know, come up here and I can just highlight it and I can push down and I can look for a font that I really like. And it's like, oh, well, I like that font. Easy. You know, and then here's your little pen tool. The pen tool you can draw anything with. I mean, it's you just draw shapes and boxes or whatever you want to make things look good. Um, you know, the way I made this, my little bookmark here, I did it in about 30 seconds just by doing this. It's like, oh, well, all right. And boom, done. Now I may, I didn't do it exactly perfect, so I may have to move a couple things around here to, you know, and and see. I can just click this, and I can move the whole thing and make it even. Done. You know, people are afraid to do stuff like this, and they really shouldn't be. You know, in this, I can just come here and I can change it to color, whatever I want, and then I can put this on top of it and it's really easy um, and it's not hard to work with and personally if you're going to do this business I would urge you to consider learning how to work in Adobe Illustrator and learning to create your own logos and your own book covers and things like that because you're going to save money you're going to save time now if you don't want to do that one of the places you can go um, is fiverr.com now fiverr.com it's a website that people do things for five dollars uh, most things are never actually five dollars but you know so we can say ebook cover my keyboard has a lag today for some reason but we can come here and we can do a quick search and tons of things pop up for ebook covers and you just have to scroll through and read the reviews and figure out whose style you like and you know pay somebody five dollars or so to design you an ebook cover um, I personally am an impatient person and typically this takes 24 hours or more for them to actually do it and get it back to you and then most of the time you don't love it so you have to say hey I want you to change this and change this and change this and then they fix it for you and then another 24 hours you get it again so it just lengthens your process it lengthens how long it takes you to get an ebook cover done and to get your book launched i'm impatient so i learned i figured out how to do it myself now i never had any classes and nobody ever taught me i just figured it out i learned i watched youtube videos i read online articles you know, I figured out what makes a good ebook or what makes a good logo, what makes a good design. And, you know, I just did it over time. I did it over time. I practiced and I figured it out. And it's not that difficult. You can do it too. And if you're going to be in real business at any time in your life or you're an entrepreneur and you're going to be launching multiple products, I'd recommend doing the same. Now, I said that they say $5. Um, but if we click on one of these, you're going to see that if we scroll down, if I can scroll down for some reason, okay, I don't know what it's doing, so I'm just going to drag it over here. So you come to Fiverr, you find the designer you want, you click on them, you scroll down, it's going to show you what you're going to get for $5 and what they need to start and just little tips and little facts about things that you need. Now here's why I say that you can technically get it done for $5. Uh, 
and then you get into all this other stuff. One day delivery, unlimited revisions, you get a beautiful ebook cover done for five dollars. <throat> but then if you want the source file to where you can you know, like if I were if I were doing it, that's the file that I could open in Illustrator and make a change. Uh, the source file is a good idea because it belongs to you and to be honest you could probably use that same ebook cover for several different books in different categories just by changing the name and you know changing stuff up um, I'm not sure why they put commercial use on here I think it's just a ploy to get people to give them an extra ten dollars I don't think there's any reason that you can't use a, an ebook cover on Amazon that you've bought and paid for um, but you know that's something you can buy if you want uh, express delivery they're gonna get it to you faster an extra ten dollars a print ready file an extra twenty dollars uh, images another ten dollars so you know there's a lot of things that they try to upsell you for personally maybe if it was a if you really love the cover that you're getting or if it's something that you may sell to somebody else at some point then I would get the source file but otherwise I would probably just stick with the standard five dollar five dollar thing but I would be working on learning how to do it as soon as I can. I would be trying to figure out how to learn Adobe Illustrator and figuring it out for myself. So then that's going to take us to... So now we've, we've come up with our idea. We're writing a book. Um, you know, Skydiving 101, How to Dominate the Air. We have did our keyword research using our Moz Keyword Explorer and we determined that yes this book this book specifically does not but we determined in our imagination here that this book actually meets the specifications that we're looking for as far as search volume you know it had somewhere between 12 or 7 and 13,000 uh, searchers and that's a general guideline too you know I would maybe go to 6 I probably wouldn't go below 6 I would maybe go as high as 15 16 and a lot of how high you're going to go or how low you're going to go depends on the competition maybe if i found one that had only 4000 but i go to amazon there's not one single person selling in that category then maybe i would write that book anyway because i'm going to be i'm going to be getting all the sales i'm not competing with anybody um and maybe if it's 13,000 maybe or maybe if, even if it's 30,000 and then I go to Amazon and you know there's only five people in the category or even if there's 50 people in the category but there's a lot of people with one star reviews and their ebook covers are horrible and the competition is not there then yeah I'm gonna jump into that field so your competition is really going to gauge how high or how low you're going to go. But for a general rule of thumb, I would say somewhere between 7,000 and 13,000 is a, a pretty, good, pretty good range. We have our title. We went to Fiverr.com where we designed our ebook cover ourselves. And we have this magnificent e-cover that we're just in love with. Now we've got everything we need for the book except for content. Now content depending on what kind of book you're gonna write I would say that you're gonna have to do some research uh, especially if you're doing a nonfiction how-to type book describing a process or how to do something then you're gonna probably either know it by heart or you're gonna have to do some research and you can use anything you want online um, the only thing I would caution you with is do not copy and paste you know you can take pieces from here and pieces from there and you can do all these things but it really needs to be your own creation at the end of the day don't copy and paste because Amazon when you publish which we'll talk about a little more later they have a 24 review 24 hour review process and during that 24 hours they actually do a search through the internet based on your book and they're looking to see if you copied and pasted any of it if a percentage I don't know the percentage exactly is copy and paste it from the internet your book will get rejected they will not they won't do it for you um, so the contents important you know spend a little bit of time on it now here's what I look at <clears throat> when you first launch your book and we'll get into this when we get to phase three in the third video but when you launch your book 
as long as your title is great and your ebook cover is great and your description is amazing, you're you're going to get some sales. Now, what's going to determine your long-term sales is going to be your content because it's one thing for people to buy your book and then it's another thing for people to buy your book and love your book or it provided real value to them and they appreciated it. So your content, you really need to put a lot of work into your content as well, even though it's not as important for initial sales, but for long-term stability and for your book to be selling for you for the next five years, you need solid content. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Put a lot of time and effort into your content. So that kind of takes us through the phase one creation page and I know this is a YouTube video and there wasn't a ton of stuff to go through here um, as far as on the screen and most of it was talking but I think that is a very good overview of phase one um, you know it's probably the the hardest and easiest part the hardest part in my opinion is coming up with the idea but putting your book together is probably one of the easiest things to do, and it's fulfilling. It's fun. Um, you know, so I think that's going to wrap up our creation phase. Now, I'm not perfect. I'm a human being, and I probably miss some things. Um, so when you get into this process and you're going through things and you're going to have additional questions, you're going to have, uh, you know, things that come up that maybe I didn't mention or maybe you're confused about something or whatever. You know, send me an email or join the Facebook Facebook group and ask in the group. Uh, but you can send me an email at bookmark for, or at tango t a n g o at bookmarkfreedom.com. Send me an email and I will get back to you. I will answer every question that you have as best as I can. I'm truly here to help every one of you. Um, you know, all I ask in return is to do me a favor. You know. Go to iTunes and check out my podcast. Now, I will warn you, my first eight episodes of my podcast, I hadn't really figured out the whole audio thing yet. So my audio quality is not amazing. It's it's just okay. And I finally figured it out. Um, I actually figured it out watching YouTube videos. Um, but I finally got my, my audio quality up to standard. Um, so, but go check out my podcast, go listen to that. I talk about a lot more things. Uh, there's a, a podcast episode based specifically around should I write a fiction or nonfiction book? Um, and it, I really go into a lot of detail there, helping you determine what type of book that you should be writing. Um, and you know, so go subscribe to me on iTunes or Google Play. Leave me a review. Leave me a five star review. I'm doing all this for free. I'm putting out this content. I'm trying to help you. Help me in return. Go to iTunes. Leave me a five star review. Um, come and join my Facebook group. You know, that's all I ask. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the next video, which will be coming out very very soon. So I hope you look forward to it, and I hope you're excited about it. In the meantime, if you're already in the process of it and you need help, send me an email, tango at bookmarkfreedom.com. So, I truly appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time, and have a very, very wonderful day.